Pentagon officials, Terry, also saying that evacuation flights are now taking off from Afghanistan about every 39 minutes. In the past 24 hours, 90 flights departed Kabul airport, carrying a total of about 19,000 people out of harm's way. But 10,000 people are still waiting to get on a plane as the race to escape from Afghanistan grows even more dire. President Biden is standing by his decision to pull U.S. troops out by next Tuesday's deadline, saying the risk of a terrorist attack on the airport increases every day. Let's bring in ABC News political director Rick Klein, along with ABC contributors Elizabeth Newman, former Homeland Security official and also former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State and Marine Colonel Steve Ganyard. Steve, let's start with you. The U.S., as you know, has supplied the Afghan military with an arsenal of weapons over the years, vehicles, helicopters, all types of weaponry. Now, much of that's much of that most likely in the hands of the Taliban. So at this moment, how concerned are you? about that. Yeah, Kara, I think uh, part of the question is what of that military uh, kit is going to be able to be reused by the uh, by the Taliban? Things like light arms and and uh, things that are like anti-tank weapons uh, can certainly be used. Uh, and so it's going to be bad optics to have uh, American weapons uh, being used to uh, to uh, point guns by the Taliban at, uh, at Afghan citizens. <clears throat> but a lot of the high value things like uh, helicopters, fixed wing aircraft, uh, those will be very, very difficult not only to learn to fly, but more importantly, uh, to learn to fix. Part of the, the uh, consideration in the past few months is who do we leave behind? Do we leave behind contractors to do this very sophisticated kind of maintenance on the Afghan Air Force that has been a lifeline out to the uh, out to the far edges of the of the uh, Afghan Army's uh, uh, line of control? So, uh, real question here about what they will be able to use. Uh, but certainly, there's going to be lots of arms, ammunition, anti-tank weapons, things that they can use, and uh, it, it's not a good optic for the United States. Well, what do you think about U.S. troops of any kind or civilian workers being left behind? Because it's hard to imagine what kind of steps you can take uh, on behalf of the United States to prevent the Taliban from using those weapons if we just look at history. Yeah, I mean, if you go back to the Vietnam War and, and all of the, all of the, I mean, the, there were airplanes that were left that were reused uh, by the Vietnamese and, and, and lots of, uh, of material. But uh, again, the Afghan, the Afghan, or the Taliban's rather, uh, are a, an insurgency. And insurgencies usually have light weapons. So at the most, they might have some anti-aircraft weapons. I think most of those would not have been put into the country by the United States. Those would be the things that could threaten the shoulder-fired surface-to-air missile that could uh, threaten U.S aircraft on the way out as the perimeter begins to collapse and the U.S. tries to pull all of its troops out and pull the ladder up, uh, essentially coming out of the airport in, in the weeks to come. So I think that the real, the real concern here is the light arms, uh, anti-tank weapons, things that the Taliban can use to continue to oppress the Afghan people. So, Rick, if I can bring in our political director on, on the politics of this, the question that, that I think a lot of most Americans are concerned about is what about the Americans? How many are left? How many have gotten out? And, and now that this figure comes out from Secretary of State Blinken, 82,300 evacuated out of Kabul, 4,500 Americans with, uh, he said, at least 1,000 who want to get out still. Uh, and he said, you know, even if we can't get them out by August 31st, we're going to get them out at some point if the Taliban cooperates. How, how do you think the administration is handling from an operational and from that political leadership so critical at this point, uh, the question of getting all the Americans out? Yeah, Terry, I think what we heard from the Secretary of State a moment ago tells you how much this strategy is based on the cooperation, the partnership even, of the Taliban, uh, a force that uh, has been fighting against American interests for two decades now. It is the tal is in the Taliban's shoulders to continue to cooperate through August 31st, according to the President, and beyond August 31st. You heard Secretary of State Blinken a moment ago say that uh, he, he and the United States intend to hold the Taliban to their public and private commitments to allow any American who wants to to get out to get out. And of course, it's not just Americans. We're talking about Afghans who are helpful to the American cause. So you, you layer on top of the, the bureaucratic and logistical challenge of, of, of getting so many people out of the country, on top of the challenge of not even knowing how many you are, there are, because not all of them have to even check in with the embassy or register with the U.S. government, to now the challenge of the Taliban, which has already been actively obstructing efforts to get to the airport, uh, trying to coax them to continue to cooperate through next week and beyond. Man, that is difficult. And it just even 
even as we were talking, I was hearing from Democratic strategists who are, again, thinking that this administration uh, has their head in the sand when it comes to the potential for the Taliban to muck up the, 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 the next six days and well beyond that, that there's a lot riding on, on how and whether the Taliban cooperates. And with the country, Rick, watching this, you know, on edge, feelings of anxiety and anger and all kinds of things coming out, I was struck, you know, Secretary of State Blinken there answering questions as he should, being publicly accountable as he should be, and yet the manner in which he talked, you know, they've sent 20,000 emails. He talked about cooperating with the Taliban, you know, please, pretty please let these people out. He said, we have points of incentive and points of leverage. And I just wonder, you know, I know that the Trump administration went the other way. Uh, and you might have heard something like if a single hair on a single head of an American is harmed, you know, there will be a high price to pay. But is there something to speaking a little bit louder? We have the big stick, but we aren't using it, obviously. We can't in this situation. I'm just wondering about the, the tone there, the, the almost bureaucratic, almost meek tone that we hear at this point when countries looking for leadership. Yeah, the, the word robotic comes to mind when you hear the, the recitation of, uh, of numbers as if this is just a, a, a numerical challenge in getting uh, X number of people out of the country by a certain date. There is a human toll that you heard Secretary of State Blinken refer to. But I, but I think, though, the, the reliance on the Taliban as a willing partner on this is, uh, is, is tenuous uh, at best. And I think there's a reticence on behalf of the administration to use any kind of blustery language. They don't want to see uh, any American interests who remain on the ground become terrorists terrorist targets, and you see talking about a lot of carrots, but not a lot of sticks, uh, and appealing to the Taliban to be good stewards in the minds of the, of the community of the world, uh, to not become a pariah state. I don't know that those are words that the Taliban is necessarily relating to, and I think in terms of the American public that watching these images, it seems like it might be off for the momentary. Elizabeth, let's bring you into this. I mean, you were a senior advisor at the Department of Homeland Security. Can the Taliban be trusted. We heard the secretary mention private and public promises. Can we believe in that as we look back at, at what we've witnessed over, over the decades? And in addition, when he talks about this international expectation with the Taliban and that the U.S. has actual points of leverage, what are those points of leverage? I mean, it's it's not like we have too many options. I think you can pick up in the language that we've watched over the last week and a half that there are very tenuous conversations happening behind closed doors. They're not going to be able to tell us the details of those because it would risk operations. Um, and they're applying pressure. They're sending some of the, the best diplomats that we have to apply that pressure in the best ways we know how to hopefully be able to get as many people out as possible. Um, so some of that leverage might be uh, withdrawing or, or not giving access to funds that the Afghan government had, uh, has uh, in its holdings but are currently locked up because the Taliban is, you know, has taken over and we're, we're not letting them have access to that money. If they want to actually run a state, uh, they're going to need funds. They're going to need infrastructure if they want to do something more than just be a tribal uh, insurgency. Um, so, you know, probably there's efforts to appeal to ego, efforts to appeal to um, whatever kind of uh, things that they need uh, in order to survive and succeed in the, in the coming months. Um, we've heard that they're running low on medical supplies. So, so certain, certain leverage points is what you're always looking for in diplomatic uh, negotiations, but let's be honest, they have the upper hand. Uh, they have the upper hand because of the way in which we departed. Um, this, a lot of this could have been avoided if it had been properly planned for. And now you have, I, what I know are, are the U.S. government employees working around the clock to try to do as much as possible to avoid as much loss of life. But um, it, it's probably going to have a sad outcome, uh, it, even though it's amazing that we've gotten 82,000 people out. Um, that's not everybody. And there are going to be lives lost because of the way that this was executed. Inevitable that there was going to be a rush for the exits. Millions of Afghans fled the country the last time the Taliban took over. Steve, I want to turn to you on another aspect of, of what's going on, uh, perhaps admirable, uh, perhaps dangerous even. We've heard uh, from veterans and former contractors who worked in Afghanistan trying to help they work so close, the, the people that they've worked so closely with. Uh, and some are talking about going in and getting people out. 
you know, how realistic are private efforts, which we are hearing from all the, so many of those veterans, uh, mm -hmm. to get people out? How much success do you think they can have? Uh, Terry, I'm hearing that they're actually having pretty good success. There's there's a there's a there's uh, many, uh, not just several, many uh, individual efforts and group efforts going on not only uh, around D.C. but uh, around the U.S. Now, uh, this is just former military people. These are former contractors. These are uh, people in NGOs. These are academics. Uh, people are banding banding together in really unique entrepreneurial ways to get airplanes and pay for them to get into Kabul to get people out that they know using their own network. So um, probably. Probably not too good to talk about it too much because we don't want the Taliban to uh, to uh, go looking for these folks. But uh, there is a really unique uh, story that's going to be written here uh, in the weeks to come about uh, people who just banded together on their own and their own initiative and their own money uh, to get out people that should have been gotten out long ago. Rick Klein, Elizabeth Newman, Steve Gannon, if you don't mind, stick around for a moment. We definitely want to come back to you and continue this discussion. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.